so um yeah so that's the thing about like uh, the evangeline movie like you got like olivia you know olivia, olivia wilde, wilde with Mar her, uh, margot robbie you're looking so from what i gathered on the interview it looked like uh olivia wilde set to wanting to direct it and margot robbie is you know either in talks of being being her or being a producer of the of the movie it it's pretty neat you know um so i got a question for you uh movie the uh, movie they just um they just announced who they're going who they cast as the silver surfer in the new fantastic four movie oh okay did let you see that, that yeah let me bring that up so um and yeah i'm this is the problem with like uh the whole agenda thing and people are like oh but she's in there but it's it's for me like where is it uh comics movies where are you oh gosh i think i, I saw it earlier so how far back here we go and it's it's the same thing right it's always about the agenda for me like i don't really care anymore about this it does you know when I saw it, I was like, this is why I own my own stuff, right? Right. Um, because at the end of the day, this sort of stuff is just, you know. Well, I uh, my my biggest my biggest problem is, you know, I'm not, I, I'm kind of with you now. I'm just tired. Of, I'm 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 tired of talking about it and tired of uh, of seeing it. So, um, it just it just it just proves it proves the point that everybody that, that, that all the complaints about this kind of stuff is is truthful is mm -hmm. is true um yeah uh there's if there was if 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 there was an overabundance of just uh ignoring female characters in the marvel universe and the marvel cinematic universe for that matter if there I could kind of understand this, hmm. but this is, there's no, there's no rhyme or reason in my opinion for this. I think it, it, it's just, it's just pandering to, it's just pandering to the audience. It's just pandering uh, to yeah. the feminists of the, of the world. And, and my, my commentary on this is like, you know, uh, what if we did the same thing with, I was actually going to comment on it, uh, Evangelina, right? Oh, is Evangelina going to be played by Brad Pitt? I mean, one, if it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander, right? Yeah. Uh, is that is that going to be okay? Uh, yeah. Of course, it's not going to be okay because it was a woman character. You know, come on, guys. You know, it's a it. There's a whole there was a whole purpose of it being a you know they, yeah. It's not important that he was a man or female, but they wrote him as a male. They wrote it as yeah. a male. Uh, there's other. Heralds of Galactus that are female. There yep. are other powerful characters in this Marvel Cinematic Universe that are female. Yeah. Uh, do we just ignore but those? Wanna, but they want to pick on an obscure female Silver Surfer character, right? Right. For that one little thing, because they did it. And this is why I think you have, to, you know, if you're a creator, stop doing this, right? Stop doing stop, this. This is stop tokenizing your own original character stop trying to make it a female character when you're writing you know, it why why is it that everybody nobody had a problem with nobody probably had a problem with um with um john stewart's green lantern why because it's a different person than what was what was there i don't know if this is a different per if this is the same essentially the same character that 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 the galactus pulled from the planet to be the herald um, mm -hmm. I'm not that familiar, but I don't, you know, but I'm not sure. It's just, it's just kind of, it, yeah, well, make her lame and make her gay. <laughs> this is basically what it is. Like, you know, this is exactly <laughs> what it is. And exactly everybody what it gets is. it. You and, know, uh, Elon, Elon Musk, you know, Elon Musk said, like, yeah, this is what where we're at with this. And, mm -hmm. but here's where I was going to go and like, like from that, right? So we know, okay. we know this is where this is all about. And so one thing, the next stage for this is, uh, let me find you this really awesome little thing that happened with the Disney shareholders. Oh, okay. Because Disney shareholders are tired, 
right? So this is from Valiant Renegade, uh, very good, very good, um, you know, uh, dude. I mean, like commentator, right? Uh, very smart. He's part of, right. uh, you know, um, he's got his own channel. I think it's like um, uh, that Park Place, right? I think they they're part of that. Let me just see. Park, uh, that okay. park Place. But yeah, so this is like a really short seven minute video and from, you know, so rather than have real people speak and ask questions or, or answer, they had a computer, they had an AI do this because it's gotten to a point like if, if you are going to disagree with us, we'll just replace you with an AI, <laughs> right? So I don't. The board yeah. of directors has recommended a vote against this proposal for oh, the boy. reasons set out in the proxy statement. I wonder why. The next item is a shareholder proposal by the Educational Foundation of America. We'll explain all these later. The full text of the proposal is set forth in the proxy statement. I understand that Laura Nixon is here to present this proposal, and I would like to invite her to do so. I would ask that she limit the presentation to two minutes at most. Your line is open, ma'am. Good afternoon. The Educational Foundation of America is a long-term investor in Disney stock. We're asking Disney not to just disclose its political contributions, as they have been doing, but to account for them, to demonstrate the company's spending is rational, strategic, and producing a positive return on investment. Disney's odyssey through Florida politics in the last several years demonstrates as to why this kind of reporting is needed. In recent years, Disney contributed over $100,000 to an administration that took aim at Disney's employees, mocked the company's values at a national level, and then punished Disney by diminishing its tax breaks and degree of self-governance. Oh, listen there to this crap. There are other examples that raise questions about Disney's political spending patterns. Our company has supported politicians working against progress on climate, even as extreme heat days steadily climb in the Orlando area and Paris, and fires oh, rage in California. Global it's warming in Orlando. Okay. To promote women to leadership positions within the company, but nearly three quarters of Disney's political contributions went to anti-choice politicians in Florida in the five-year run-up to 2022's 15-week abortion ban. Next month, a six-week abortion ban will go into effect in Florida. That is before most women, even though they are pregnant. One in four women will have an abortion in her lifetime. Think of the harm to Disney's Florida workforce over the years to come. And finally, Disney has also supported politicians to promote the 2020 stolen election conspiracy theory. With this proposal, we believe it's time for Disney to provide accountability to shareholders that it's spending its political dollars wisely and in alignment with its core principles and interests. Thank you. Who is that idiot? Florida is run by Republicans. Recommended a vote against this proposal for the reasons set out in the proxy statement. <laughs> the next item is a shareholder proposal by the National League and Policy Center. The full text of the proposal is set forth in the proxy statement. I understand that Chloe Cole is here to present this proposal, and I would like to invite her to do so. I would ask that she limit the presentation to two minutes at most. Your line is open, ma'am. Good morning. I am Chloe Cole, patient advocate for <laughs> in the medical profession. I am presenting proposal number seven titled Report on Gender Transitioning Compensation and Benefits, sponsored by National Legal and Policy Center. Disney pays for gender transition interventions, but not e-transitioning care. Therefore, the company discriminates based on gender identity under EEOC regulations. I speak from personal experience as someone who was deceived and physically harmed at a young age by gender ideology validated by the medical industry and pushed to the masses by corporations like Disney. Influenced by modern media and social networks, Ooh. I began a transition to male at age 12. Ooh. By age 16, after practitioners I trusted encouraged me to take puberty blockers and get a double mastectomy, I tried to come back to reality, but it was too late. Reality. My body has been irreversibly damaged, and years later, my chest is still oh, in damages. My doctors have abandoned me. You doctors look and shrug. As a result, I am suing those professionals who steered me into taking these destructive steps that have permanently scarred me. But Disney, in its arrogance, has responded to our proposal by stating that I am only trying to generate attention for a limited agenda. Oh. Mr. Iger, Disney under your watch is pushing the limited agenda of gender ideology. Disney has become the Ursula that is stealing the voices of thousands of little aerials across the world. 
By ooh, telling us ooh. that we can be something that we can never become, the lawsuits are coming, sir. It's only Damn. a matter of time before oh, wow. past or past employees whose bodies and lives have been irreversibly harmed will show up at your door mm -hmm. looking for justice and rest. I hear background rest noise from, agree with Chloe. from somebody, for not us. Seven. Maybe the caller. The board of directors has recommended a vote against this proposal for the reasons <laughs> set out in the proxy statement. <laughs> Piss on the you, next Disney. Item is a shareholder proposal by the National Center for Public Policy Research. The full text of the proposal is set forth in the proxy statement. I understand that Scott Shepard is here to present this proposal, and I would like to invite him to do so. I would ask that he limit the presentation to two minutes at most. Your line is open, sir. So, uh, thank you. Just stop the operation and by law. Must I avoid. I didn't realize it was Chloe speaking. Chloe is amazing. She's uh she's someone who was whose life was destroyed uh because of this whole you know gen gender affirmation thing, and she's like basically now is helping and speaking out ag uh, against this happening to children uh, yeah. because she yeah. she was a child. She was forced into this, and that's why like I I'm like fully you know I fully back her. I fully uh, fully am against uh, transitioning children at children before mm -hmm. 18 because i uh i feel like you're destroying lives even before they're able to understand who the hell they are you know kids like i don't know who i was until later in life right and so if i had somebody just go oh this is who you are then like i would be chloe right now right right and saying hey you know you've ruined my life and now i'm gonna sue the hell out of everybody else who actually did that and so i'm like yeah i don't agree with this and uh you know that's why i'm part of the you know that's why i support uh gays against groomers because i think uh you know th they uh, those they understand what can happen because of the so-called uh what i believe right is a social media enforced corruption of children by adults right especially males male adults are doing this and most of the young kids that have been thinking uh, in these groups uh, where male adults, they're not females that are pushing this, it's male adults, pedos and groomers mm -hmm. are in these groups telling and pretending to be kids and, uh, you know, and teenagers are telling these young kids that this is what you need because now you become a target for their fetishism, right? You know, their, their kinky ideologies, right? right? And I just find that abhorrent, to be honest, and I'm fully, you know, I hate that shit um but yeah i didn't realize well, the, whole, the whole the whole um the whole gender swapping thing is just such a farce in itself right now you know yeah. um you trying to force me to adhere to your delusion um that's basically good i don't care if you if you chop your penis off and Tra transfer something into something that resembles a vagina and you grow you know put boobs on you're just a dude with with no penis now that's that's all i see um you know do i think these people need to be treated less than human absolutely not yeah but don't you you don't have the right to force me to adhere to your delusion because you're delusional you're a guy you're a man you're a man that decided to do this to yourself. You're a woman mm -hmm. that decided to do this to yourself. Don't, yeah. I don't get to, I don't participate in your delusion. Just like. If you're an adult doing it, right? If you're an adult, go do, live your best life the way you, you think. Do. do whatever you want to do. Don't mess with the kids. And this is what I hate about Disney, right? Right. They think they have the right to for, enforce that BS using their billions of dollars and their, their, and I mean that in the sense of billions of dollars because they have the advertising revenue. They have the right. media yeah. uh, entertainment thing that they can push that agenda. And they've, they've said it, that's what they're doing, right? And right. that's what they've been doing. And they've been destroyed in the, in the, on, on TV, in their streaming. They've been destroyed on film, right? Like they haven't made anything that's of value to the community for the last five years, right? Like, look at all their movies they put out, got destroyed by people. And, you know, uh, I've said this the other day, uh, you know, on, on a stream when I was doing, the, you know, that 70% to about 60% or, you know, in, of the world is 
traditional family value, mm -hmm. right? They're very conservative. If that's the way you want to say it, they're conservative, right? Uh, because they're traditional family value. Keep your hands off my family. I know what's right. best for my children. We are family, your mother, father, children, right? And this is the way we're going to do things. Now, when you have a company like Disney coming out and going, hey, we know what's best, and we're going to put this sort of agenda into our storytelling when we've always been about enforcing and trying to create good family stories where parents are seen as the good people as, and that we want to sh uh, show the kids that you should be in a good family and what's bad is like you know if there's some if there's something you know we don't really we just want to tell good stories where it's wholesome that you can just sit your kids down and go away and not worry about it but disney went the other way we're going to tell you how to now you know treat your children we're going to tell you how you should raise your children what right. you should would do with them and we're, we're going to enforce that through our entertainment you know? Yeah, yeah, it's 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 sad. It's such a sad thing. Used to be a time when you know you'd sit in front of the TV to go to watch the Disney Channel, yeah. and you did not have to worry about any of this woke messaging. It was just fun family entertainment. That's it. Yeah. There, you know, there's no necessarily a, a, a an agenda that was being uh, pushed or any of that stuff. It was just nice, fun entertainment. And now it's yeah. a whole different world. And, um, you know, it's a whole new world to, to, to turn one of their, their songs, you know, uh, yeah. but it's just, it's just sick. I lived in Orlando, Florida for, for almost my entire life. Right. And, um, my brother worked at Disney for, for a few years when he was <laughs> younger and, um, the, just the the way that they treated the cast members back then they didn't treat them poorly they didn't they really didn't they just they hired people to do a certain job yeah. and they got a lot of benefits not necessarily i don't know what kind of health benefits he he, he enjoyed when he was full-time that's none of my business but i'll tell you what um 80 to 90 percent of the of the employment that you got in orlando florida you didn't get a lot of benefits regardless of what you where you were being where you were working but they were able to you know they were able to enjoy the park on their days off they were able to bring family members into the park on you know when they wanted to but they were a cast they were called cast members they weren't employees they were cast members and they're playing a role so there had their hair had to be a certain height they couldn't have facial hair they couldn't have tattoos visible tattoos and piercings and things like that and the, the whole reason was is walt disney wanted to create a a fantasy world mm -hmm. where you go in there and you escape from the real world you're not yeah. reminded of what's going on in the real world you're in this fantasy place in this fantasy yeah. land and by loosening up those restrictions for lack of a better term are those those mm -hmm. rules that they had now I go in and I see some guy, full on beard, ugly dreadlocks, and I, you yeah. know, and and just look, you know, tattoos up to his arm. I have tattoos. I don't know if you guys notice this. I have tattoos. You know, I got, you know, I got them all uh, over the place. Tattoos? Right, but yep. I understand that if but I go I to a certain guy, I should be able to cover them. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and people that are. Like, I mean, yeah. The other thing is like now I also don't want to see a dude dressed up as a fair, uh, as a uh, Disney princess. Yeah, right. I you yeah. know I, I, I just that. don't because I, I uh, you know because it's 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 like they say like it's sending a wrong message. But here's the thing: you're supposed well, let me, to let me, have, let me finish one comment. Let me finish one comment. I'm sorry, I just got to finish it because I when I was at Disney one time with my family, my kids, my two boys, saved up money, made sure I got the tickets for my two boys. We went to Disney World, and it was just a wonderful day. And this was before they started to implement all of this, uh, loosen out all of the rules for, for dressing and dress code and stuff. And I was just, like, so happy. I was just so happy to be there that day. And we're leaving. And as we're leaving, we're on the tram, on the, on the monorail to go out to the parking lot, right? 
And on our way out to the parking lot, I can see the park and how beautiful it is. It's lit up. You know, I can see some of the fireworks going off in the background, you know, yep. and it's just beautiful. And then I pass this, there's a wall that I pass through. And as yep. I pass the wall, I see the real world all of a sudden. I see yep. the parking lot. I see the truck. I see this. And I'm like, ugh, I'm, I'm no longer in that fantasy world. So right. it, made me, it made me want to go back to that fantasy world at some point. It made yep. me appreciate that fantasy that I was able to experience and to give to my children. And then the last time I was there, you know, no, I run into people that are, you know, a guy dressed as a girl that's, yep. you know, trying to serve me. I don't, I don't need that. I don't want my, I don't want my little kids to under, to have to ask me that stuff. Yeah. You know? and, and I think that's what it comes down to is you don't want to confuse children. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, and you know, and I, I've talked about this, you know, um, previously it's like, I, there's this young kids don't need confusion they're confused enough mm -hmm. right when they're young and you don't want to mess with them because we always understood they're there we're supposed to protect them from the real world right that's the whole thing we want to protect them while we came from the real world then because when they come of age they can go discover the world for themselves and decide for themselves what they want that's why we say like after 18 you do what the hell you want you know, mm -hmm. we we accept that you're an adult. Now you can make adult decision. Until yeah. then, and you, and you get fine. adult, you get adult adult uh, consequences. You get adult yep. consequences when you become an adult. There we right. go. So let's carry on with this, right? Let's see um, what's the next thing on here. Avoid needless okay. material risks. Maybe the most unnecessary come from partnerships with charities that push extreme, divisive, hot-button positions Here we go. that no one honest would call core to the company's business, especially if the extreme positions appall most customers. Hmm. Fiduciary duty requires honest, full review of likely objective risk and reward to the company. To skip or to fake this, or to proceed anyway, breaches fiduciary duty, and in this, in this context, it loads risks on shareholders for the benefits only of the CEO and advancing his private obsessions. That looks Ooh. like hell dealing to us. And does it sound familiar at all, Mr. Iger? A clever preteen could have told you that making Disney synonymous with force feeding radical gender ideology to small school children <laughs> and hiding it from the parents would send Disney's core audience flooding away, maybe not forever, and it did through your death grip on power. Oh. Ditto for trying to destroy girls' chances to shine in their own sports. And on and on. Oh, so you're Mr. getting your money's Mr. worth Mr. here. Iger, you had to know all that. Heck, you hired and kept people who boasted they'd make Disney entertainment designed to drive away Disney's core audience. Thing is, though, Berthold Brecht wasn't a business guru as the Iger era disaster displays. It violates every single CEO duty to dissolve a corporation's uber loyal customer base, then try to convene a new one, submissive to your extremist niche worldview. We hear you once wanted the White House and to go down in business history. I think the latter's sewn up, but maybe not the way you hoped. So yeah, <laughs> let's have an audit of your partnering record. Count up the unnecessary risks that just happen to push your private agenda and hope that brand new faces sit in your places to start to assess the damage and responsibility. <sighs> Fiduciary duty <sighs> does not in endorse the Iger record. Oh God! Oh, I wish I was on screen. Woo! The board of directors has recommended a vote against this proposal for the reasons set out in the proxy statement. Make sure you're subscribed to Valiant Renegade wow. and join us every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern. So that is that, and I want to put up a image, a photo I took myself, right, a couple of weeks ago. Oh, well, two weeks ago, and this is the value of disney in new zealand mm -hmm. and i'm gonna that's what i can see it as right so i mean that's what i reckon right so oh it doesn't want to go up so can't even get rid of it 50 percent off they're yeah. 100 year celebration stuff right that's been oh, yeah. sitting there for about a month mandalorian there's a figure that's about $30, five bucks. You can't get rid of it at five bucks at a department store, all right? There's one line, there's about freaking 20 of them that was just there. It went down from like 
25 or something from then went to 15 then went to 10 then went to five that's new zealand five dollars so that's three dollars us you can't get rid of a three you know three inch whatever figure for five dollars or three dollars us right but this is like this is a um, gamestop for new zealand eb games elect, uh, electric mm -hmm. boutique, whatever, electronic boutique electric boutique yeah yeah so gamestop that's they got a whole freaking thing there and they couldn't get rid of it and at 50 yeah. percent right not only are their movies getting destroyed with nobody mm -hmm. watching them the dvd sales no, non-existent because they stopped doing dvds now right because they don't want to do physical media now they're merchandising that's supposed to represent a hundred year anniversary of the most supposedly not anymore family friendly product in the entire world who does not know mickey mouse you know mickey right. mouse in every single country in the world you know disney in every single country i even know uh, a friend of mine's daughter is a cast member you know was a cast member i'm not sure if she still is in disney right she that's all she ever dreamed of being a print disney princess now she's there yeah. uh and so if you look at it like during during COVID, they fired something about 1200 of them and then they went yeah. and gave money, like bone a million dollar bonuses to the executives at the same friggin time like they needed that money so nobody anybody who's actually still thinks that disney is a, is a family friendly or care about their own workers is part of a cult because they they've they've drunk the blue milk right from star yeah. wars right because they think it still is a good thing it's not the rest of the world saying it's not that 70 percent that 70 percent of the world i'm saying that a traditional family based they basically accept we don't want disney no more we don't care this isn't for us because we have a traditional values you look yeah. at asia you look at uh middle east you look at india you look at uh south america all those people are best not interested right in disney because they can't even move a freaking product or you know or oh, sell yeah. a freaking movie ticket yeah and so it's kind of you know if you've lost if you can't sell a movie ticket to an animated movie that's taken you five years to make that you have put all these like um you know uh merchandising around then you have failed yeah you should change your direction because you're yeah. supposed to be making money and about your shareholders and listening to the shareholders say we don't want this anymore stop doing it you're you you know i'm just I, i'm a shareholder myself in certain things right not in disney and if my shares are going down i'm going to start complaining how do i build my shares back up right because i want value in what i'm putting into something yeah and that's what the shareholders are going who why are they doing this to themselves right why is bob Iger or and any of those people going hey you know what we're losing money so let's keep losing money yeah because it's, it's, it's not their money at the end of the day right it's, it's a shareholder's money I, I, and i really don't understand i don't understand their process i don't understand what the end game is for them to do this to completely just uh shut everything down and you know and you saw on that video uh it didn't really matter what the shareholders complained about they just they didn't they didn't talk about it it was struck down before yeah. it was even voted on like yeah. like that that's well that's that's great well we got to hear it but then you know um still just got pushed down you know so well like i said it's not their money it's a shareholder's money it's a shareholder's money that's in backing this keeping this company alive if yeah. the shareholder more decide you know what I'm taking all my shares out. Yeah. It'll fold because there's no value in that company anymore. And so it will be now Bob's money, whatever he's got. And this is why like everybody was pissed off when, uh, you know, the last holders who had hope, fans who had hope and George Lucas going, Hey, you know, let's, let's, let's back Pouts, right? The guy who was coming in, let's back him and like try to, and Elon Musk, let's try to change the ship right and get away from the whole you know um the same old same old changing right. characters, changing uh you know the ideology of this whole thing getting away from the gen agendas and you know getting back to what made disney great and made it into this multi-billion dollar company that's you know got 
parks in you know what's like France and in China, you know, and because they saw value in it, now there is no value in it because yeah. somebody that would find value in it is basically that, yeah, I, I, my kids aren't watching this. Yeah, you know, like right, I'm you know I don't want to have anything to do with it because I don't want my kids seeing that stuff. No, I, and, I don't. I don't either. Hey, Nathaniel, thanks for coming on, man. Um, Nathaniel does this uh, show called uh, Secret Spins. It's really awesome. I've been talking to him recently. He's also a comic fan. So thank you, man. Um, yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, I know all they care about is destroying. Like, at this point, you all you can think about is, you know, there is nothing else but ruining something that isn't there. So maybe they want to destroy the whole Walt Disney and build it up as Iga, right? You know, Iga uh, world, I, whatever. I, I, it, it blows my mind away, you know. Um, I remember the times with uh, Michael Eisner and the stuff that he was doing, and uh, mm -hmm. and then they, you know, the board of directors just, you know, he was just, he was just all of a sudden he was just gone. I don't know if he retired yeah. or if he just stopped being whatever, but all of a sudden he was just gone. And then, you know, um, but I would tell you what, I'd rather have Michael Eisner in there now than than this guy. Yeah. Um, and it, and it's sad because it's very close. It is really close to my heart because I lived, I lived in that area for so long yeah. and, um, and it's just, it's just sad. It's just really, really sad that they're doing this yeah. to those parks and to that, that company. Um, they went through a time period. If you don't remember in the seventies and eighties, when they, when they were doing movies and they just, they were not making any money. They just weren't making mm -hmm. any money at all on their movies. And now we're after the after the Marvel Cinematic Universe bubble is about to burst. It's all it's a def, it's deflating rapidly right now. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to go into another into another depression, basically, of their entertainment mm -hmm. and. Let's just hope that it doesn't it doesn't just destroy them completely, because um, Disney employs quite a few people in uh, in the state of Florida. It is, yeah. they, they, they they employ quite a few people. There's a lot of money that comes into the state of Florida because of Disney World. There's a lot yeah. of money in there, and that and and people people think you know, well, he's just let's just let's just kill Disney off and let it die. Well, when yeah. you do that, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of things that are dependent on those Disney dollars for yeah. survival. Yeah. And when it when it dies, if it dies, you you're gonna have you're gonna have Orlando turn into something that it looks like that reminiscence of Detroit when the yeah. car industry left, and it is it's it's going to be horrible. It's going to be terrible. Well, um, the, the thing is, like Disney can't leave. The only thing they can do is to destroy the business, right? They can't right. pack up and leave because it's such a well. Big no, that's what I'm saying is, I'm not, I'm not saying that they leave. I'm just saying that they, let's say, let's say tomorrow, bank, you know, Disney goes bankruptcy, has to close down half the parks, uh, lay off half their their workers. So people don't understand. Yeah, those those Disney workers that sucks for them. But also all of the hotels that are surrounding Disney, all of the all of the uh, restaurants that are around Disney, all the gift shops that are around Disney, all of the yeah. other entities that depend on the tourism yeah. of Disney to survive, you've just now you've you've, you've destroyed it. Um, yeah. Florida is lucky. Florida is lucky that it has the coasts and the beaches and things like that, yeah. and they have a they have a they have another. They have another big theme park over there that seems like they're not going super woke, but on the same token, you know, um, it will be it it will be very bad uh, economically for Disney World, um, and and or for for Florida for Florida. I'm sorry. So yeah, but you know, also for Disney World as well. Like if you really think about it, that's where people see where Disney World is. 
right? right. They travel all, all the way from across the world to go there. Like everybody's, you know, dream is to go there. Like every child's dream is like, I, I don't really, I never had that dream myself because mm -hmm. it's just not my thing, you know, uh, to go anywhere for the reason of entertainment. I just want to see the land. I want to see, like, I want to go to Machu Picchu uh, because of uh, what it is, you know, as a, for architecture and all that. Right. And then also go to Japan for the culture, right? But, right. But not theme parks have never been a thing for me. But the, the but what you're saying about how the business side of things, right? Because mm -hmm. us like when we're running our plunge convention here, I know that when we run our convention, fifteen thousand dollars comes into the city, right? Right. That wasn't on that day. That didn't come, right? Because people come in to eat, they pay for petrol. They come in to visit, so that's all that stuff. Then they go do their shopping that they normally wouldn't. So they time it to be that day that they come to shopping. Uh, they buy drinks, then they come to the thing. They buy other material, what have you, right? They don't just buy from my stuff, merchandise that we sell from our part of the things. They buy for everybody else. So there's a lot of, and just for a little couple hundred people come to our event. And then, like, then if you've got bigger events, look, you know, look at uh, C2E2, whatever, uh, Emerald City, all that stuff. All those events bring in monies that wouldn't come to that city and so mm -hmm. you know when you're slowly eroding the value of the product the way they're doing right now you're eroding people's long-term belief in your product right oh, yeah. the people yeah. that are growing up with this there's a whole generation now growing up will go yeah i remember when dad was watching it's like and I saw that. I was like, we never stop. What you know? So my kids aren't watching that either. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that's how it works. Because like, if you if you if you as a child love that, you share that with your kid as you grow older. With I mean, when you have kids, it's yeah. a generational thing. So imagine the generation after us that are right. You know, young kids that are right now, they will not be in love with Disney afterwards because they're not watching those movies because their parents are not taking them to those movies. Well, their parents are not sitting down and saying, "Hey, watch this." The parents are going, yeah, watch Snow White from the, you know, 60s or before. That's 30s. when it was good, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And um, unfortunately, it won't get better until it's going to get worse before it gets better. Oh, it's not even, I'm not even sure if it's going to get better. They had a chance here with Lucas to side with, uh, you know, with Pouts and with Elon and go, hey, look, can we ride the ship? They had that one chance. So they played dirty politics, right? They tried to say, oh, you know, we got all the votes and to get them people to on site. And, you know, people got sore for that. But, like, when you really think about it, the cultists in, in um, you know, Disney still going to stick with Disney. They want, they're too uh, – it's same with Marvel, right? People who have been reading Marvel comics every Wednesday will still read it no matter how good or bad it is. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I yeah. don't know, man. I don't. I'm not selling any more. I'm hardly selling any Marvel comic books anymore. I've wow. gotten to the point now. I only, I only buy what I know people are going to want to look at. Right. And uh, my, um, I just don't. You know, in the in the comic shop that I went to when I was still in Florida, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books still on the shelves from months ago, months. Yeah. And you're like, well, you know, he thought this was popular and it's just not popular. Um, Marvel, Marvel's bubble has burst. Yeah. Um, you've had, what, three Marvel movies that have failed this year? Yeah. Or last year? Um, and now you're going to, now we're coming in with, uh, with Deadpool and we're hoping that Deadpool will help things out. Yeah. You know, by introducing the X-Men and all that stuff. But, you know, there is but, still... But then you've got, like, you know, just as we were looking, you got the plus there, but then they come with the negative straight away, straight after, yeah. right? With that whole, you know, with the whole... Uh, and I know people are going to go, oh, blah, 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 blah. But really think about it. This is a negative. This is a negative to them. They can mm -hmm. say whatever they want it's because bad. all the good... All the good they had with uh, with uh, Hugh Grant coming, um, Hugh Grant, what's his name? Uh, you know, Wolverine, right? Uh, Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman, right? That was all good news because we knew that Ryan Reynolds and uh, and him were going to be perfect, 
and it's a plus it's like boom yes where everybody's interested x-men 97 everybody's interested and you know what so you guys are all interested in that that's really cool you love us now now we're going to give you this <laughs> right yeah, yeah we don't yeah. give you nor norad whatever his name is right but we're going to give you this version instead you yeah. were hoping for the other version right but norn we're going to rad give you was it norn rad or something like that yeah i always get i've never i've never been a, like for myself i've never been a big huge uh silver server fan like i'm an x-men fan and that's always been my thing uh i kind of became a fan of friggin you know avengers because of the movies but i still won't you know i have the comics but i don't read them right but i'm a ex i'm a mutant fan uh but yeah but you had two hits to to your side you had x-men 97 and you had you know deadpool 3. uh and now you've just decided well you know what I'll screw that. We're just going to give you a female uh, silver server. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Oh, well. Yeah. You know, whatever it is, I guess it's, it, you know, I guess it is a different character. That is fine. But, um, yeah. uh, you know why, is, you know why, you know why the comic, you know why the comic shop guy and the yeah. guy that's been into comic books for the last 40 years has never heard of this character. You want to, you want to take a guess on why I haven't heard of this character? she's not because popular a, she didn't do well so yeah. the same thing's going to happen with this movie it's not going to do well uh, yeah but like suck. my friend said right like my friend said when it doesn't do well we the fans will be blamed right it's oh yeah, yeah. it's going to be our fault it's going to be yeah. well you're lucky you're lucky you're 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 not the same complexion that i am you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna slide by the by the blame it's me it's it's, it's, it's yeah. the it's the white males white american males that are going to be uh, blame for not liking this and uh, uh, that's uh, fine we can take it <laughs> yeah uh, and um, the other thing i was like thinking where's my silver surfer i've got a silver surfer here somewhere you know um with a surfboard marvel legends somewhere um i can't really see where he is but like you know i've got i'm not going to be running out to get this you know get this um get this character that nobody's ever heard of and the mm -hmm. weird thing is the cultists, the Marvel cultists, right, are amazing. They will go out and dig up because, like, last year, like, about two minutes before this was announced, they had no idea who this character was, right? They never spoke about this character. This is how cult-like yeah. this, this Marvel thing is. Nobody knew who this character was until they announced it. Then they had to do a Google search. Oh, I'm a fan of this now. Now you should love this character. Well, it's it, always you know, it, happens. You bring it back. Let's let's rewind it nearly almost 10 years now, right? Uh, 2017, 2019, right? Uh, we had we had Avengers Infinity War and we had Avengers Endgame, right? Yeah. And everybody's like, oh, this is the greatest thing ever, greatest thing ever. But when you read the source material that this movie was based off of, if they would have gone with the source material, it would yeah. have been 10 times better. Now, after after the fact, after everybody re, uh, 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 rediscovers the source material of, on why Thanos snapped out everybody in you know, half of the population, mm -hmm. in the original source material, everybody's just like, oh, we should have gotten that. This is garbage that we got now. Um, yeah. And... Um, you know, I would have gone on a limb with all everybody that's that's really buzzed and hyped about you know nostalgia and that kind of stuff. I'd have gone and gotten Lawrence Fishburne to re to redo. That was in my the, head, the man. Silver like, Star, the Silver like, Surfer. You yeah, know, I was like, that's please. what I would have done. Because you know, oh, because everybody so loved cool. him as Silver voice. Surfer. He everybody, and this was a terrible movie. This was a terrible movie. The Fantastic Four 2, yeah. the sequel, it was horrible. The Rise of the Silver Surfer. But the best part was the Silver Surfer. He was awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, and why are we why are we introducing Silver Surfer in the first place on this first one? Let's get Dr. Doom out there. Dr. Doom, yeah. oh my goodness. You want a you want a baddie? Get Dr. Doom out there, dude. I don't yeah. oh, this is weird. Well, I mean, um, well, I mean when um when this third, like make it like maybe do the third right even though this didn't work that well do part three because we're waiting mm -hmm. for galactus right mm -hmm. galactus was announced at, like sort of like uh what is it called kind of like teased at the end of it and if you did it like 
I don't know why people don't like this movie. I kind of loved it. I thought it was. I enjoyed cool. it. Just I enjoyed the movie. Like, I'm not saying I I yeah. hated the movie, but it's. But when you really really break it down, it's just they're just going after. They're just going after the really crappy version of Doctor Doom again. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, they they show Galactus as just a cloud. You know, yeah. So it was just kind of, eh, we don't, you know, um, there were some really cool parts in the movie. I'm I'm not I'm not denying that. Yeah. But um. But I don't know, man. I I just I'm just really tired of the whole garbage crap. You know the 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 you know hey you know you're excited for fantastic four great we got uh uh what's his name i can't think of his name uh kaczynski playing fan playing yep. reed richards in wandavision you're like oh that's great and then we're like well no 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 no. he's going to be pedro pascal in this new one yeah come on guys that's the thing that's the other thing. like stop stop giving us what you think is going to work right right we know Let's give us what's going to work. We'd like to see him as well. Right. You know. Uh, why and, are we using Pedro Pascal? Well, he's he's Mandalorian. Uh, you know, he yeah. We he got him right to take his mask off so we can see yeah. him without his mask. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's pretty yeah. cool, I guess. I'm not even a huge fan of Pedro Pascal. I don't think he's a great actor. Um, yeah. You know, he, he got wearing the mask. Is the best his, thing about it. Yeah. 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 And he's you know. I mean, that's got to be a primo gig as an actor, right? You know. Yeah. Oh, what, what are you gonna do? Oh, I'm playing Mandalorian. Oh, that's awesome, man. How much? How much shooting yeah. time do you go? I ain't got to shoot a little. I only got to shoot like three scenes, you know, and then I'm out. Yeah. And I, and All I, I got to do is just do voice, voiceover voice for the rest of the time, yeah. you know. Oh wow! It's perfect. And they make my they make toys based on me and everything. It's like yeah, great. Yeah, day. yeah, yeah. So. But I mean. Yeah, I, that's why, like I said, like I'm, I've walked away from Marvel. It doesn't bother me anymore. I'm just happy doing my, you know, creating my own comic books, uh, like, you know, writing and just creating these IPs, owning these IPs, so that, and then in my, you know, having, you know, the, holding the copyrights to them so that nobody can change them, right? Right. Uh, making sure that they never, ever get changed. Otherwise, you know, they don't get to made. I, I'd rather none of them get made to anything. I rather they just stay as a comic book than ever be allowed to made into any other medium, right? Because what's the point if somebody decides to change them? So right. you know, it's it's the you know well it's just, you know it's the it, it is kind of um, here's the thing is is Disney bought Marvel, they yeah. bought 20th Century Fox, so now it doesn't matter what what ownership you had they bought star wars it doesn't matter what george lucas had yeah it doesn't matter what george lucas really doesn't matter what george lucas wants yeah uh disney gets to do whatever they want with that new with their new toy they get to do whatever they yeah. want with it back in the day when they were selling the licensing to these characters then the owners had a little bit of say of what and how they were depicted on screen now they don't so and um it's just getting it's getting worse and worse and worse you know that's all i can tell you